Hello everyone, Ace here, and today I have a bit of a news update regarding the E3 doxing that has occurred. Now as those of you who have watched my first video already know, this was a mass doxing of everyone that went to E3 this year, with over 2,000 individuals having their home addresses, their emails, their real names, and their phone numbers all exposed for the world to see. And that news of the scandal had been first brought to public attention by a YouTuber named Sophia Narwitz, who made a particular point of making her video only after the ESA had taken steps to remove the link and the information along with it. So all things considered, you could be forgiven for thinking that the news journalist community would actually be rather thankful to a person who actually exposed a massive information leak that could easily be blown into one of the largest scandals in video game history. However, that is well and truly simply not the case, and instead, some of the members of the journalist community have decided to directly attack Sophia Narwitz over the matter and even go so far as to suggest that she is somehow to blame for all of this. Or at the very, very least, they are blaming her for this data leak spreading. One notable example of this happens to be game journalist Jason Schreier, who repeatedly condemned Sophia Narwitz's efforts over Twitter, even going so far as to repeatedly suggest that, quote, her irresponsible reporting led to the info going public when it might not have otherwise. I say repeatedly because there are at least three tweets that he has made in that time that specifically make this claim. He then went on to dismiss the intentions of her actions by mentioning the fact that she was a Gamergate supporter, which of course is to suggest that by extension, he is also blaming in part Gamergate as well. Now some of you may have noticed the start of his tweet that mentions her connections with Gamergate and how he suggests that actually the ESA is completely at fault here. However, it's rather obvious that this is an example of doublethink, because while he does say that the ESA is completely at fault, he then goes on to repeatedly denounce Miss Sophia Narowitz for her efforts, while the sheer utter incompetence of the ESA by comparison fails to get even a sliver of the amount of attention that he is giving to Miss Narowitz. Were he genuinely of the opinion that the ESA should be held completely at fault, then perhaps he should decide to leave Miss Narowitz out of this picture, if not outright congratulate her for exposing this leak in the first place. But Mr. Schreier of Kotaku is not the only individual that has decided to condemn or even blame Miss Narowitz. In fact, he's not even the only person from Kotaku to do this either, as here's a Kotaku article written by Maddie Myers about the whole matter, who goes on to claim in our article that Narowitz's video had already unwittingly publicized the existence and continued availability of the file. Her line of reasoning is that the ESA had messed up in its first attempt to actually rid the internet of that particular file, and as a consequence it was still technically possible to download the file when Mrs. Narwitz's video was first uploaded. Apparently the ESA had merely removed the link to the file rather than deleted outright from their website. However, before we blame Sophia Narwitz, it's important to note that her video very specifically stated that the spreadsheet was no longer there, because obviously she believed that the ESA had fixed the matter the first time around. So to suggest that her video actually promoted the continued existence of this file is disingenuous at best and outright dishonest at worst. But even if we are to play the devil's advocate here and say that Miss Narwitz's video caused the information to spread, and therefore she is somehow to blame, then essentially her crime is the fact that she trusted the ESA to actually have some basic competence and be able to actually fix the problem the first time around. Apparently, according to this Kotaku article and to Miss Maddie Myers, she was supposed to expect the ESA to be breathtakingly incompetent in their efforts, and ultimately unsuccessful, which is actually an extreme condemnation on the ability of the ESA when you actually think about it. That we are to flat out expect them to constantly make mistakes and not get anything right. Which is actually quite ironic when you realize that this is coming from Kotaku of all places, a publication so utterly and infamously inept that it makes perfect sense why they would expect this from someone else. Basically what I'm trying to say, Mr. Jason Schreier and Mrs. Maddie Myers and everyone else that works at Kotaku, if it makes you guys feel any better, I do actually expect you not to be able to write decent articles at all. I expect you to outright lie to your own audience. I expect you to provide woeful misinformation due to your sheer inability to actually do basic research or journalism. I expect you to have the writing skills of a five-year-old. I expect you to inject politics wherever you can because you see video games as little more than a tool to push politics rather than an art form. I expect your reviews to be outright tainted by corruption. I expect you to demonstrate on a constant basis why this Gamergate that you hate and fear so much was actually completely valid and justified. And above all else, I expect you to be an absolute bane to the video game industry. However, before I close this video out, I will say that there was perhaps an unintended silver lining to the 
of this thanks to one of Jason Schreier's tweets. As when he talked about Sofia Narowitz's connections to Gamergate, he was unwittingly making the case that perhaps the Gamergate community itself played a small but notable role in helping to expose one of the biggest scandals in video game history. Or at the very least that a person from that community played this role. And when considering historically speaking that it should be the job of the journalist to expose these kinds of scandals in the first place, that is of course to suggest that Gamergate as a community can do better journalism than modern game journalists. And at this point, I think that's something upon which most gamers can agree. In any case, this has been Ace. Hope to see you guys again soon. Take care. Ace out.